and welcome back to Tales from the World's Firesides. I'm Clive Gilson, the story guy, and today I'm telling a Jamaican folk tale called Man Crow. As ever, my main aim is to tell stories that might otherwise be forgotten or lost to, to modern readers, uh, tales that help us share our cultures and just maybe make the world that little bit less complex. But let's get down to the story. Man Crow. Once there was a bird in the forest named Man Crow, and the world was in darkness because of this bird. The king offered thousands of pounds to anyone who could kill the bird and bring light back to the world. The king also had three daughters and promised that if anyone killed Man Crow, he would make him very rich and give one of his daughters in marriage to that person. Thousands of soldiers went into the forest to kill Man Crow, and they found him on one of the tallest trees, but no one could kill him, so they returned home empty-handed. However, there was one young fellow named Soliday. He said to his grandmother, Grandmother, I'm very poor. I'm going into the forest to see if I can kill Man Crow. His grandmother replied, Boy, you'd, you'd better sleep by the fireside than go to the forest to die. But the boy said, Grandmother, I'm going to town to buy bows and arrows. So he went to Kingston and bought them. When he returned home, he asked his grandmother to make six johnny cakes, and he put them in his knapsack and travelled into the forest. Soliday searched until he found the place where Mancrow was, and he saw Mancrow at the highest part of the tree. And he called to him with this song. Good morning to you, Mancro. Good morning to you, Mancro. Good morning to you, Mancro. How are you this morning? And the bird answered, Good morning to you, Soliday. Good morning to you, Soliday. Good morning to you, Soliday. How are you this morning? And Soliday shot with his arrows at Mancro, and two of his feathers came out. And Mancro came down to the second bow. And Soliday sang the song again, and Mancro answered it just as he had done the first time. And Soliday then fired another arrow at Mancro, and two more feathers flew out. And so the singing and shooting of arrows continued. With each song, Mancro came down one branch, and Soliday fired an arrow and knocked out two more feathers until he had used five arrows. Now, Brother Anansi was in a tree watching what Soliday was doing. Then the song was sung for the sixth time, and Mancro jumped down another branch. Soliday put his last arrow in the bow, took careful aim, and shot at Mancro. He killed him, and Mancro fell off the tree. Soliday went and picked up the bird, took out its golden tongue and golden teeth, and put them in his pocket. Then Soliday went straight home to his grandmother. When Soliday had gone home, Anansi climbed down from the tree, picked up the bird and put it on his shoulder, and he made his way through the bush until he reached the king's gate where he knocked. Who's there? they asked. He replied, it's me, Mr Anansi. They said, Come in. And the king asked, What do you want, Anansi? And Anansi said, I am the man who killed Mancro. They took him in, married him to one of the king's daughters, and prepared a grand feast for him and his family. They seated him at the head of the table, but Anansi refused to sit there. Instead, he sat by the doorway, watching for Soliday. The king, of course, didn't realise that Anansi was up to something. But as soon as Anansi saw Soliday approaching, he stopped eating, excused himself, saying, I'll be right back, uh, and went out to the kitchen. Meanwhile, Soliday knocked at the gate. Someone answered and asked, what do you want? Soliday replied, I am the boy who killed Mancro. And they said, no, that's impossible. Mr Anansi killed Mancro. Soliday, however, took out the golden tongue and teeth and showed them to the king, asking, how can a bird live without its teeth and tongue? 
they checked the bird's mouth and found it to be true. They called for Anansi. Anansi responded, I'll be there soon. They called for him again, but he closed the kitchen door and said, I'm not feeling well. Meanwhile, brother Anansi, feeling ashamed, took his time making a hole in the roof to escape. They called for him again, but this time there was no answer. They pushed open the kitchen door, but Anansi had disappeared through the roof and he's been missing ever since. The king, however, married Soliday to his daughter and made him one of the richest men in the world. So that, my friends, is the story of Man Crow. If you've enjoyed the story, uh, you can pick up uh, copies of my books uh, that tell tales from around the world, uh, from most good bookstores and from uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble and other good online bookstores. They're in hardback, paperback and ebook formats. You can find out more about me, Clive Gilson, the story guy, and the project Tales from the World's Firesides at clivegilson.com. Uh, and there's also dedicated Facebook and YouTube channels which are indicated at the banner at the bottom of the screen. I would really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. Uh, it does always help to keep uh, these stories front and centre on the sort of algorithms on things like YouTube. Uh, and please do follow or subscribe because there's new stories every week, at least two. That's it for now, though. So uh, until next time, uh, just keep reading and uh, stay inspired.